to discuss uh, a very important guideline today which is called placenta previa and placenta accreta diagnosis and management this guideline was published in september 2018 we are going to discuss the two important appendixes in this guideline so that we can have better understanding of this guideline so coming toward the appendix 2 which is in fact the flow diagram a flow diagram for ultrasound diagnosis and follow up of placenta previa and placenta accreta spectrum okay let us start from the top okay start from here patient is at 18 to 21 weeks we have done all the antenatal uh, care of the patient and if we find that 18 to 21 weeks um, you need to do normally scan if at that scan we find that there is a low lying placenta low lying placenta is the one in which placental edge is less than 20 mm from internal os or if we find placenta previa placenta previa is the one in which placenta covers the os okay um it's also written that we have to consider tvs if posterior placenta previa or if high bmi if these two features are present then we have to consider tvs okay so we found either low lying placenta or we found placenta previa what we have to do we have we can go in two direction either to the right side or either to the left side right side approach is followed okay in those patients who had previous c section okay so in the on the right side what risk factors are written first of all previous history of placenta accreta spectrum okay or anterior placenta or previous cesarean section if these three features are present then what we have to do we have to go down we have to do ultrasound scan for placenta accreta spectrum and what are the ultrasound features of placenta accreta spectrum that we will discuss in the appendix 3 okay now if there are ultrasound signs suggesting of placenta accreta spectrum what we have to do we have to refer the patient to the specialist center for multidisciplinary team management we have to involve the consultant of surgery and anesthetist the, the surgeons and uh, uh, the radiologist and a lot of other uh, people in the multidisciplinary team before doing any sort of intervention we have to book the patient with those multidisciplinary team of doctors now coming to the left upper corner um there is another group of patient with no previous cesarean section okay you can see it's written that posterior placenta or anterior placenta but with no previous cesarean section what we have to do in that case in that case we have to do ultrasound examination including tvs is required by experienced sonographer or clinician at 32 weeks of gestation okay so at 32 weeks of gestation we have to do follow up okay now what we find what we find in them we can find either asymptomatic placenta previa okay or we can find either asymptomatic low lying placenta and in the middle we have those patients who had recurrent bleeding in those with low lying placenta previa or placenta low lying placenta okay so on the sides we are asymptomatic patients low lying or placenta previa and in the middle we have uh, the Uh, symptomatic patient on the sides we have asymptomatic in the middle we have symptomatic patient and there is another group of patient in which uh, placenta is 20 mm or more from the os means at 18 to 21 weeks they got placenta previa no line but if we do scan at 32 weeks um, usually um, the placenta is a uh, less uh, more than 20 mm so in that case no further ultrasound examination is required for confirmation of placenta previa Okay, so what we have to do in case of asymptomatic placenta previa patient, okay, in that case, okay, patient is asymptomatic but patient has got placenta covering the os. So in that case, we have to give steroid cover at thirty four to to thirty six weeks of gestation because patient can become symptomatic at any time, and scan around thirty six weeks of gestation if still placenta previa, if scheduled. Uh, if uh, okay is still uh, present a previa for schedule cesarean delivery between 36 to 37 weeks okay so in th these patients we have to rescan at 36 weeks and what we have to do in case of patients with asymptomatic low lying placenta in that case we repeat ultrasound scan including tvs if required by experienced sonographer at 36 weeks of gestation if still low lying for individual individualized dcn around the delivery okay so in in these patient we have to do rescanning only if required 
Now coming to the patients in the middle, in those who are uh, who are having recurrent bleeding, those who are symptomatic, okay, they either low lying or placenta previa, and they are having recurrent baby bleeding. So in that cases, we have to do vigilant monitoring or actions. In these patients, we have to give steroid before 34 weeks of gestation, and if still placenta previa, for scheduled cesarean section at 34 to 36 weeks of gestation, according to the clinical symptoms. So, in case of the asymptomatic placenta previa, C-section at 36 to 37 weeks. And in case of this symptomatic placenta previa, we have to consider delivery at 34 to 36 weeks. One other thing I want to mention is that if the ultrasound scan, like uh, if we come to the uh, right upper corner and um, uh, we said that those patients having pleasant, uh, previous C-section, we do ultrasound scanning for placenta accretor spectrum. If there is no ultrasound sign of placenta accretor spectrum, they, then we have to do scan at 32 weeks of gestation and further flow chart is the same um, as I've explained before for those patients without previous C-section. So that is all about the appendix 2. Now before coming to appendix 3, which shows the ultrasound imaging or sign uh, of placenta accreta spectrum, okay, uh, I would like to show some imaging to you, okay. So these are in fact the 2D gray scale signs, okay. In the first we see, like these are all features suggestive of placenta accreta. Uh, if we uh, study a little bit or if we uh, visualize this imaging uh, a little bit, then we will have better understanding of the appendix too, okay. So what we see here, Okay, we see that in the first um, um, in the first uh, diagram, we can see that there is hypoechoic oechoic plane present. That is the normal finding. But in case of placenta accreta spectrum, we don't have any hypoechoic plane. Okay, no hypoechoic plane found in placenta accreta spectrum. Another feature is that of the abnormal placenta lacunae. You can see from here. And third, two D grayscale sign is that of bladder wall interruption. Now, what is the fourth 2D grayscale sign? That is myometrial thinning. Okay, there is a thinning of myometrium or lying placenta. And another feature is that of placental bulge, you can see from here. And the last one is that of the focal exophytic mass, placental tissue seen breaking through the uterine serosa. Now, coming to the 2D color Doppler signs, the first sign is that of uterovesical hypervascularity. Second sign is that of the subplacental hypervascularity in which we see the striking amount of the color Doppler signal seen in the placental bed. Now, bridging vessels, these are very important signs, okay. The vessels appear to extend from placenta across the myometrium and beyond serosa into bladder or other organs. Now, the last feature on 2D color Doppler sign is that of the placental lacunae feeder vessels means there are vessels with a high velocity blood flow leading from myometrium into placental lacunae and that shows um, causes turbulence upon delay entry. Now uh, here in these figures we have 3D color Doppler signs. Okay, 3D color Doppler signs shows intraplacental hypervascularity in which we have complex and irregular arrangement of numerous placental vessels. Okay, so this is the, the whole appendix showing all the features which I have explained. Okay, in the 2D grayscale sign, as I have told that there is the loss of the clear zone, loss of irregularity of hypoechoic plane in the myometrium underneath the placental bed. Okay, second is abnormal placental lacunae means presence of the numerous lacunae in including some are large and irregular often containing turbulent uh, flow visible in the grayscale imaging. Bladder wall interruption, I have all, or, already shown to you, loss or interruption of the bright bladder wall, okay? And myometrial thinning, the thinning of the myometrium uh, overlying the placental bed to less than 1 mm or undetectable. Placental bulge, I have sh um, shown to you in the figure, and their focal exophytic mass, okay? Now, 2D uh, Doppler sign shows uterovesical hypervascularity, Okay, subplacental hypervascularity, bridging vessels, placenta, lacunae, feeder vessels, and the 3D Doppler ultrasound shows intraplacental hypervascularity. 
So I've explained the two important appendixes to you. Thank you so much for your patience.